Hi everyone, my name is Simon and I'm the Deputy Director of Research at Cure Parkinson's. And I'd like to thank the World Parkinson's Coalition for inviting me here today to talk to you about what is new with regards to drug repurposing for Parkinson's disease. Now, the first question to ask is what do we mean when we talk about drug repurposing? Drug repurposing is basically a means of speeding up the traditional drug development process by evaluating clinically available therapies in new medical conditions. The traditional drug development process is long and time consuming. It starts off with a target protein, and then you will look and screen for molecules that can target that target protein. And after you've done that, then you'll start to do medicinal chemistry to improve that molecule, give it uh, better properties. And then you'll start testing that molecule in animal models of uh, your condition of interest, doing checking the metabolism, the toxicology, the tolerability of it, before you start shifting across into clinical studies, testing the molecule in humans. Now, by drug repurposing, what you can do is that you know a lot already about a lot of the um, drugs that are used in the clinic. We know a lot about their safety, their tolerability in humans. So we can skip over that medicinal chemistry step. We can skip over the animal model, modeling and tolerability and metabolism research, and we can go directly into testing the drugs in humans. So we're taking five to 10 years off that drug development process and jumping straight into testing on humans, speeding up that drug development process. So a good example of um, a drug that's being repurposed for Parkinson's is the diabetes drug called Bidurin, or also known as Xenotide. It's a GL, it's called a GLP-1 agonist. So GLP-1 is the protein that is the receptor that it's targeting. And preclinical data suggested that this drug uh, by Durin is having beneficial effects in models of Parkinson's. And the phase two trial was set up and run, and the results were reported in 2017, suggested that this drug was also having beneficial effects with regards to the motor symptoms of Parkinson's. As you can see in the graph uh, presented on the slide here, the red line demonstrates a group of individuals, 30 individuals who were treated with a placebo treatment. And you can see that they gradually progress in their Parkinson's symptoms. Whereas the blue group, uh, these were 30 individuals who were treated with Bidurin for 48 weeks. And you can see that they immediately improve in their motor symptoms and they stabilize across the rest of the 48 week period. So this was an encouraging result for the Parkinson's research community. And a phase three study has now been set up and has been conducted in uh, the UK where we're recruiting 200 individuals with Parkinson's and they'll be treated either with placebo or with Bidurin for two years and they'll be assessed over that period of time. And hopefully, if the results um, pan out, this will be a, um, a new drug that can be used for the treatment of Parkinson's in the very near future. And this study, um, this program was support, supported recently by some epidemiological data which suggested that people who are with, uh, living with diabetes and are treated with Xenotide have a reduced risk of developing Parkinson's in the long term compared to people with diabetes who are not being uh, treated with Xenotide. So, uh, so further support for repurposing this drug for Parkinson's. Another drug, another example of a drug that's being repurposed for Parkinson's is Terazosin. This is a drug that's used for the treatment of enlarged prostates. But last year, a group of researchers at Iowa University and collaborators published results suggesting that this drug was having beneficial effects in models of Parkinson's by boosting uh, the cellular energy levels. And this was resulting in neuroprotective effects. A phase two, a phase one, two study was set up immediately to test the uh, safety and tolerability of the drug in people with Parkinson's. That study is now completed and we're waiting on the results. Um, but while we're waiting, the researchers are continuing um, to develop this program by looking at uh, target engagement um, in, another, in another cohort of individuals. And very recently, they've published further um, data based on analyses of a medical database, um, which suggested that people who have been treated with terazosin over the long term have a reduced risk of developing Parkinson's. So again, further support for developing, for repurposing this drug for Parkinson's. A third example of a drug being repurposed for Parkinson's is Ambroxol. This is a 
uh, widely used respiratory medication. So it's used for inflammation of the throat and lungs. And a phase two study was um, set up after some preclinical data suggested that this molecule was boosting levels of a key enzyme, a key Parkinson's related enzyme called GKase in the brain. And a, this phase two study was conducted. And last year we learned the results of that study, which suggested that Ambroxol was well tolerated in people with Parkinson's at a much higher dose than what's used for um, its typical throat and chest uh, conditions. Uh, so it was well tolerated, it was safe for six months, and it also um, in increased levels of this um, enzyme G case in the brain of these individuals. So these were um, encouraging results, and we're now looking at setting up a phase three trial for um, Ambroxol. A fourth example of a drug that's being repurposed for Parkinson's, there's a lot of drugs being repurposed for Parkinson's, but a fourth example is UDCA. This is a secondary bile acid that uh, typically is used in the clinic for the treatment of uh, gallstones. It helps to break down gallstones and um, improve liver function. Uh, Preclinical data suggested that uh, this um, drug was having uh, positive effects in models of Parkinson's boosting um, the performance of mitochondria. These are the power stations of uh, cells in our body. They provide all the energy. So UDCA was um, improving the function of mitochondria. And then a phase two study was set up, a clinical trial um, in Sheffield here in the UK and also in London. Uh, that study has now been completed and we're waiting on the results, um, in the, which will be hopefully available later this year. Um, and it'll be interesting to see um, whether we see a positive effect there or not, and whether this drug is taken forward for further evaluation in Parkinson's. One other topic to mention with regards to drug repurposing in Parkinson's is the Australian Parkinson's Mission. So this is a large clinical trial program set up by the Australian Federal Government in which they are spending $30 million on multi-arm cl um, clinical trials. So these trials are involving lots of um, hundreds of people and they'll be divided into separate groups, uh, separate arms, you could call them, of a study. And each group will be treated with one particular repurposed drug. And one group will be treated with placebo. And all of the, none, of the, none of these individuals will know which drug or, um, they're being treated with. So there might be placebo or it might be one of the repurposed drugs. But they will be followed for over a year um, with clinical assessments, etc. And um, the purpose here is to look at multiple drugs at the same time to, to determine which of these drugs could be effective as opposed to just doing one place one drug versus one placebo one drug versus one placebo this is a means of speeding up the drug repurposing uh, program uh, process excuse me and um, the first trial the first multi-arm trial in the australian parkinson's mission is up and running now and they are um, in the process of setting up a second and third uh, study as well so that'll be something to look out for in the, in the near future. So just to summarize, drug repurposing represents a means of speeding up the traditional drug uh, development process by evaluating clinically available therapies um, in new medical conditions. And we've looked at a few examples of drugs that are being repurposed for Parkinson's, Bigerin, Terizosin, Ambroxol, UDCA, and also a novel uh, platform for testing uh, repurposed drugs in the form of the Australian Parkinson's mission. And with that, I'd just like to say thank you very much, and I'll be happy to address any questions you might have in the Q&A session. Thank you very much.